flag in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Quick Six. I am your host, Kyle Robert. That is Brian Twining. We are here to break down the divisional round of the NFL playoffs. We'll go through all four games, give you some thoughts on the sides, on the totals, any player props we may like, and then give you our three best bets uh, at the end. I do want to throw up last week's bets, but before we do that, Brian, how the hell are you? Well, before throwing up last week's bets, let's just start this off by saying you're going to want to tail Kyle and fade my picks because I have been seeing a lot of red. So there is the plays. Let me zoom in. So I had three picks. Uh, I had Travis ATN over 76 and a half rushing yards. I got to admit, um, I was a little concerned the way that game was going, but uh, shouts to the Jags for for not only coming back to, to keep things interesting, but to, to find a way to actually win the game. And Doug Peterson on that fourth down play where it looks like they're all going to sneak and he does a little handoff yep. and runs around the edge and uh, all that. So Etienne smashed that number. That was nice. Um the Vikings minus three was probably the one I waffled on the most. I don't I don't know what to do with the Vikings. The offense did enough. The defense stunk. But the thing uh, is, is we saw that all season. They yeah. like they're the 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 team or the division winner with the lowest margin of victory over since the merger or something yeah. of that nature. So I mean, there was no reason to think that this game wasn't gonna be tight. Yeah, and I think they had a negative point differential despite winning 13 games. It was absolutely absurd. And then uh, Cowboys minus two and a half. I loved it, Brian. I told you um, you were obviously a pessimistic Cowboys fan who was a little worried about how the game was going to go. Um, but that was one of my favorite plays from from the weekend, and I'm happy I stuck to my guns there too. Um, was was a pretty decent weekend. Um, and then we'll flip over to your side where it's, it's not pretty. Um, the Bills struggling Skyler with Thompson. the Dolphins. Really? What what are, what do we make of that? Because like obviously, like they got up seventeen nothing. It looked like they were on cruise control. They did a lot of just like YOLO deep shots, um, yeah. and all of a sudden things got weird, and there were some turnovers, and the Dolphins just kept kicking field goals and making things interesting. I, I guess I, it, like are it's you It's interesting because the Bills like you would think that they'd be able to throttle people and just run away from them which we've kind of seen in the past but I think because they're they're almost like stuck in between whether or not they want to try to establish the run or just stick with the pass with Josh Allen and I think they work in the run at times where they probably shouldn't when the passing game is working which would help yeah. them you know run away from teams and then Josh Allen is inexplicably carrying the ball like a loaf of bread and just throwing into double coverage and making stupid decisions like trying to go deep to John Brown a completely ill-advised throw um but yeah like it, it it's interesting to see that they're not able to put teams away and this Dolphins team that was playing rookie Skylar Thompson like it it was I I for sure thought that this game was going to be a runaway. It looked like it was going to, and then all of a sudden, the wheels fell off the Bills wagon. Yeah, and they, I heard uh, I was listening to a pod this week, and they talked about Josh Allen has kind of like Jay Cutler moments from time to time. We're just like, <laughs> not for the full game, but he'll have like yeah. a couple drives or maybe a quarter where he's just doing stuff that like you don't expect him to do, and things that he did before he kind of got elevated with. Brian Dayball and Stefan Diggs and all those people. Um, but yeah, I felt like they were going to crush them and then they kind of let them hang around. They kind of let weird stuff. And it's not like, it's not like Skylar Thompson did amazing or Tyreek had two touchdowns. It was just weird stuff. So I'm trying not to get too worried about it, but it was definitely interesting. Uh, you had the under and giants Vikings. I think we were both very similar there. Um, that game got wild. The Giants constantly had people running free in the secondary. They just did these crossing routes, and the the Vikings just could not figure it out. And then, obviously, the Vikings offensively were able to do things. So 
Uh, the under was never in play. That no. was that was over by I think the third quarter. So, um, and then the Dallas Tampa over. Don't like, even get me started on that. Forty five is what they ended up finishing. I thought we were gonna get the over for sure the way that game was going. Um, I mean the Cowboys definitely did their part. The mm -hmm. offense did their part. If stupid Brett Maurer makes one. One of those effing extra points. Yep. We're looking at a cover. Yep. So frustrating week for you, for sure. It's been a frustrating um, season. Yes, but I'm still 34 and 26, still hitting 57% of my bets. So I am not going to complain. Uh, let's jump into it. We'll run through the four games. We'll talk about our thoughts and kind of go and we'll start. On Saturday with the early games, uh, we have the Kansas City Chiefs minus eight and a half versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jags had this insane 27 point uh, comeback, beat the Chargers, obviously being at home helped a little bit, um, but they were able to do just enough to get to cover town. The defense made a few plays at the end. The offense did um, some amazing stuff, obviously. Um, you know, it, it was nice to see that you can throw four interceptions um, and still win the game, Ryan Tannehill. So um, it would have been nice if you could have done that last year. But, you know, I'm not going to be bitter about that at all. Um, so, Brian, I, I want to talk about this game because I think both of us were very similar, like Chiefs, whatever the number, let's just lay it and not even think about it. But as like the week's gone along, I'm starting to to wonder if that is the play. Where where are you at? I'm still. I I mean, I'll start by saying like this is not data backed whatsoever. This is literally just my perception of what we I'm going to see here. Like as much, although I talked about Doug Peterson's experience in the playoffs last week going against the Chargers, like this is a completely different animal. We're talking about Andy Reid coming off of a bye in the playoffs with Patrick Mahomes, an offense that towards the back half of the season looked absolutely unstoppable, a defense that is getting healthier. Um, I think we saw Frank Clark return to practice today, so that'll be a huge addition to them if they get him back. And this is a Jaguars team, like you said, who dropped back 27 points to the Chargers, and then all of a sudden Brandon Staley decided let's get super conservative and allow Jacksonville to get back in this game where that is not going to happen with the Chiefs and Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes is not going to allow that. And looking back on some of the numbers, um, the two of the last three years, the Chiefs' first playoff game, they won by double digits. So I think that this is something of a of a game that they're facing a team who needed everything they could muster in order to come back to even advance to this stage. While they're going to be fully rested, their game plan is going to be, I mean, their their T's will be crossed, their I's will be dotted, and they will be hitting on all cylinders, in my opinion. So I, I still like the Chiefs laying the number. Yeah, I think I do too. Um, I think this is a game that they dominate and kind of like we saw and kind of just are happy to have that win and then obviously just maintain it. They don't, you know, they, they don't collapse. They don't fall apart. Um, I think my favorite play for this game is the under. I, I think this is a little bit of a little more lower scoring game. Um, and in fact, with uh, Sean Hockley, who will be refing this game, the under is 43-33 and three in all of his games. Um, uh, Kyle pulling the out the data. Fifth best under. Yeah, I'm gonna try and try and throw in a few nuggets if there is uh, if there is something there. Um, there is a couple player props, and we talked about it a little bit before the before the um, we started recording, Brian. But um, I, I'm looking at two players specifically. First, Patrick Mahomes. I think he can have an amazing game. I think he is really really scary. Um, but his over under for passing yards is three ten and a half. Uh, I think I like the under. I think he throws two seventy five ish. Um, two and I think that's and I think that tells the story, like you're saying, uh, of an under where Kansas City is just dominating the game. They don't really have to do too much. Yeah. And they don't have the Tyree Kill explosion that they used to have. It's a lot yeah. more chunk, chunk, chunk. 
And I think um, the running backs are a lot more involved this week, especially in that second half. So uh, Jarek McKinnon over his rushing yards, 20 and a half. Um, you, I think you can still find some 19 and a half if you dig around. Isaiah Pacheco, his number is at 55 and a half. I kind of like that. That's ridiculous. Um, yeah, I think both of those make a lot of sense. I do like ETN again, but I do wonder if I should be a little more concerned because I don't, you know, this like if I think this game goes a little more sideways. But, you know, ETN is not a like despite kind of what we remember from Clemson, he's not really a passing down work back. But they don't seem to be worried about not like like taking him off the field and not running the ball with him. So do you think the only thing I would be concerned about there is that he's he's seen a lot of volume Mm -hmm. in these games. And like you said, I don't think they could stick to the same game plan if they were to fall behind multiple possessions to this Chiefs team. Yeah. Like they were against the Chargers who they kind of figured, okay, we have their offense down now like. Because the Chargers were very limited. It was either Eckler through the air or Keenan Allen, and that was it because they were not running the ball, whereas Kansas City has that newly established threat of the running game with Pacheco and Jarek McKinnon out of the backfield as a pass catcher. So I, I, I'd i worry about his volume in this game. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Patrick Mahomes, anytime touchdown, plus 320 is kind of interesting. I could see him, especially around the goal line, running one in. It has been interesting for Kelsey, especially like the past six weeks. He hasn't he hasn't really been as potent as he had been, but maybe you know they're kind of a little more comfortable. Um, well, on the Patrick Mahomes thing, he has at least one rushing touchdown in every single postseason he's played in. So I mean, you could probably bet that you know a couple weeks in a row until it hits, and you probably still wind up uh, making yep. your bread at the end of the day. Um, and if you want to get a little reckless with any time touchdowns, Justin Watson and Noah Gray, I think both make a ton of sense. They're longer shots. Um, but I think we could see what about some... Blake Bell, man? They they finally got the him Bell back. He's that... against his former team. He is seven to one on DraftKings, so I don't I don't for any time? For any time. Wow, that's still a short number. Yeah, well, they've they've taken, you know, they they, they don't like getting um they don't like getting hit by big touchdown numbers. Any, let's see. Score anytime touchdown. What does FTN have? You can get 11 to 1 at MGM. Um, you can get 8.5 to 1 at Bet Rivers and Unibet. So those are those are going to be your best numbers. That 11 to 1 number is really nice. However, yeah. it is the playoffs. You know Patrick Mahomes is going to have some weird ass they we've we saw the Statue of Liberty ran last week by the Giants. This week we're gonna see the two-handed Statue of Liberty or some weird ass variation of something like yeah. that. And uh Noah Gray is plus six fifty at FanDuel, just just throwing that out there. But um yeah, I think I think both of those names make a ton of sense. So I'm I'm going Chiefs under uh with McKinnon and Pacheco. Are you are you on the under with me, or are you uh, just just hitting the uh, the the cheese spread? I do lean the under just because I think that this is a spot where the Chiefs could. I mean, I said it before the show, kick the living shit out of them, and they just run away with it. And it's like thirty-one to fourteen, but um, the potential of Jacksonville just going deep after dropping back and you know defensive touchdowns Kansas City just keeping the foot on the pedal worries me a little bit so I'll I'll stick I like just the the number with Kansas City yeah yeah I just if it was like 48 or 49 I would probably be a little more concerned but the fact that it's over 50 um, 53 is a lot yeah yeah cuz they could even get 50 and you'd be fine especially this is Trevor Lawrence's first road playoff game in one of the most hostile environments in the playoffs. Yep. Uh, I wonder actually, now that you mentioned that, Uh-oh. what is a anytime touchdown for the chiefs defense? Let's uh, not, let's not go there again. We, we were on the bills last week and of course it was, I the it was a good bet. Sport. It looks like DraftKings has it at four to one. I don't think that's, that good if you can find five to one or better i bet then then it'd be more interesting uh let's go to the second game on saturday and we'll start with the eagles uh seven and a half point favorites against the cowboy or against the giants the over under of 48 
interesting spot. Um, I think the Giants impressed a lot of people. I think they're getting a lot of um, a lot of attention this week. Obviously, my guy Daniel Jones looked great. Made some made some amazing plays. Was finding his receivers. Was running the ball super effectively. Um, but does he turn into a pumpkin this week? But does he turn into a pumpkin <laughs> this week? That's that is the question. Um, so I guess what's your overall read on this game and, and kind of expectations for how this may play out? Well, I mean, first I want to talk about, uh, you, you made the comment, maybe it's a prognostication by Kyle that he likes the Cowboys to be the 49ers. He said, Eagles, Cowboys. Uh, no, in all seriousness, uh, it, you can count me as one of those persons that is sold on the giants, maybe not full wholeheartedly, but I've been coming around on them as the season has gone along, mainly because they feel like a gritty type of team. Like the defense is good enough, I think, to keep them in games. And as long as Daniel Jones is not making mistakes, they they have what it takes. But I do worry about their firepower on offense. I mean, no. Isaiah Hodgins, Richie James, like Darius Slayton got beat up during that game. It, are we going to have to see Kenny Galladay out here this week? Like I worry that they're going to have enough yeah. Against an Eagles team who just like the Chiefs coming off of a bye, fully rested, fully healthy, Jalen Hurts another week per, uh healthier like it I, I lean the Giants with the points, but it's probably not a game that I'm going to be betting. Yeah, I think for me this might I'm I haven't I'm I I still have one empty spot on my betting card and this is one of my options, the Giants or the Eagles minus seven and a half. I, I love Philadelphia this week. We were talking a little bit about it prior to recording, but obviously if you look at the game against, you know, in week week 18 when it was a 22 to 16, everybody sees the final score, but that was a game where the Eagles were dominating for three quarters and kind of let the Giants hang around. Um, a lot of their guys came out. And then obviously early in the season, when, when the, the Eagles were clicking and rolling, yeah, um, they dump trucked them. So I, I think this is a good spot. The Eagles are also getting much healthier. Obviously hurts back, but on the defensive side of the ball too, which I think is really important. Um, their, their defensive line is getting healthier. If they can slow down Saquon, they can slow down Daniel Jones in the running game. I think they have a good chance at, um, at um at winning this game comfortably i think this could be this could be the game that they win by 10 points 12 points and and everybody's like wow it, the this eagles team looks legit um i do want to talk about the quarterbacks cuz they both are incredibly compelling from a running standpoint um and you know they my um jalen hurts rushing prop is a lot lower than i thought it was going to be and I think there is some concern about how yeah, much he may run. And that's kind of there. But he ran nine times in week 18 in a game that really didn't matter. Nothing. And he ran for like, I think, 77 yards um, in their first contest. And if you go to look at his rushing prop, it's 49 and a half, 50, 50 and a half. Like the over feels very much in play. It feels like he could rip off a 35 30 yard run and then kind of chunk his way uh, to the rest of it well um, my 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 counter to that for jalen hurts in particular is that if you think that they're going to dump truck the giants they may go completely away from any designed runs and yeah. literally tell him like listen you are not running throw it away yeah yeah i i mean i that makes sense but they ran it nine times in his first game back he yeah. ran all over them in their previous matchup. I I don't know. Um, and then Daniel Jones's rushing prop is really interesting too. I could see a situation where he's kind of forced out of the pocket a little bit more and has to run for his life. Um, and as long as uh, you know, I, I could see him making some plays. And uh, my brain is not working. Um, he only ran and, for like twenty seven yards the first time they played, though. Yeah. At, so, I mean, like, that is one thing. Philly does have a really good front seven. They're mm -hmm. good at containing quarterbacks. Um, you know, they're not going to be holding anything back this week. So, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, I we saw a lot of Daniel Jones stuff last week, but I think that was scripted against Min the, what Minnesota wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and I obviously, 
you know, Daniel Jones has had some amazing passing performances, but his two biggest ones have come against Minnesota. So I, I think the Eagles Eagles dump truck them here, and and I think they cover well, this from both Eagles. I think it's also really interesting, too, when you look at Daniel Jones's number of 40-something, whatever, whatever it's posted at. I think at DraftKings mm-hmm. it's 40, 45 and a half. When you look back at his entire season, he only went over that number six times like in in the 16 games that he ran so i mean I, I, and then when you look at when he played really good defenses they he was not putting up those kinds of numbers like in division i don't think he did it once so i mean or he did it he did it week three against the cowboys but outside of that he got held held down by washington and philadelphia so i worry about his rushing prop and i think philly may kind of take the same stance that a lot of teams have done in the past to say Lamar Jackson, where they're like, listen, we're going to prevent this guy from getting out of the pocket, make him beat us through the air to his non legit targets on the outside who yeah. even our third corner, like our slot corner can cover their number one guy. And I think the secondary for Philly is so much better than what Minnesota has. Oh, it's it not even make, close. It should, yeah. So it should, the the guys won't be running free in the secondary like they were a week ago. I also like yeah. Miles Sanders a lot this week. I think he could have be a nice um, anytime touchdown, um, you know, rush yards prop, all that kind of stuff. I I did want to look at real quick though is like uh, something that just came to mind: a Saquon receptions prop. That's a good call because I do think that it's going to be really difficult for Jones to have time in the pocket. And you may uh, four and a half right now at DK at plus money at plus one fifteen, and I really think if they're going to want to maintain possessions and you know move the ball, they're going to have to get the ball in Barkley's hands any way possible. Um, you know he had five receptions against Minnesota. He had two the previous game before that, but he had eight against Minnesota in Week sixteen, five against the Washington in Week fifteen. He's gone four or more receptions, one, two, three, four, five of the last seven games that he's played in. Like, yeah, I think Saquon will be a major part of the passing game. So I'm actually that, that that's actually going to be one of the bets that I go with this week. Saquon receptions over four and a half. Plus I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, his longest reception is also set at like 11 and a half. I think that's very much in play oh, where yeah. you can go over that. Um, Cause he looks, he looks incredible. He looks yeah. fully healthy. Finally. And his receiving yards are around 25, just like between 23 and a half and 24 and a half. Um, so I don't hate that either. I think, I think that makes a lot of sense. And if, and if we're working it from, the idea that the Eagles play really well, they probably win by a lot. I, yep. That 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 all kind of kind of goes together. So let's and you're not over and talk for about Rita. Sunday's games because while Saturday is going to be a nice appetizer and give Sunday us a lot to, to be excited about, I think Sunday's is is where all the action is. And let's go to the first game where the Bills are now five and a half point favorites most places. Um, open up obviously at three point three and a half. The Bengals made me really can uh, question what their ceiling is against in that game against Baltimore, and yeah, but you can't honestly, in my opinion, you cannot read too much about a divisional game, especially in the AFC North. Yeah. Like, if there's any division that knows each other, you know, basically down to the blueprint, it's the AFC North because all of those coaches outside of Zach Taylor really has been, have been there forever. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Um, this is also obviously the DeMar Hamlin game, so I'm very curious to see if Good there's point. any weird stuff. If T. Higgins catches the ball and runs into a defender, you know, does does he not try and Have finish like the PTSD run? PTSD almost. Does he over? Yeah, like it, 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 there is a lot of um, interesting like mental things that could come out of this game. Um, obviously, from an injury perspective, the Bengals are piling them up and it's getting a little bit concerning they lost jonah williams um in their game against baltimore it doesn't it, it's basically he's, he's already ruled out right yeah he's already ruled they're, out they, they lost thing. alex kappa the week before yeah. that yeah i think they're down three offensive linemen at this point obviously the bills pass rush without von miller isn't quite as good but when you're going up against that that defense that's going to be that's going to be challenge um 
And but it is interesting to note, like we let off the show recapping the games last week. And if Miami was able to move the ball with mm-hmm. a rookie quarterback, with an all, also an offensive line who has been very injured and they're just kind of finding their way, like yeah. w- even with a, a turnstile in front of them, Joe Burrow should be able to, you know, get the ball to the outside. He has quite possibly the best receiving core in the NFL altogether. I, I mean, yeah, so for me, this game, if you like the Bengals to cover the number, I think you have to take them on the money line. Oh, yeah. We, I feel we've like talked about the, that before in games like this. Like, mm-hmm. this should be three and a half, in my opinion, not not five. Right. And if if you think that, then obviously the Bengals getting five and a half is, is a steal. And if you keep waiting, you may get six. Um, but I think it's Bengals money line or, giant, or Bills alt line. Like, I think the Bills either win comfortably um and and we kind of wonder you know because obviously like last year the Bengals just like they they ha- obviously had the plays against the raiders and then that pl- the touchdown that was called back um you know ryan Tannehill threw four interceptions and they still probably should have lost um you know they were down big to the chiefs and then ended up um coming back and winning outright and the arguably their best performance was in the Super Bowl which was the game they lost. So pretty wild run for them last year. Um I'm curious to see if they can recreate some of that magic. I think it's going to be a bit of a challenge but I I don't know. I I think it's bills or nothing but you know you're you're a little more optimistic than I am. Well, and then like something else uh I I'm I'm a sucker for like numbers and statistics and trends and stuff like that. The Bengals have lost a total of 11 games the last two years, but only three of those have been by more than five points. Yeah. Like they, 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 they're in games. And I think that has a lot to do with their firepower on offense. And we saw it last year in the playoffs. Like they were never out of a game. They had ice, ice man, uh, Evan McPherson kicking 50 plus yard field goals left and right to win them games. They went to Kansas city to get to the super bowl. Like this is, this is not unfamiliar territory for this squad, even dealing with injuries. And mind you, this team made it to the super bowl last year with an offensive line, which was probably worse with their starters than this team is with playing their backups at, at three fifths of the position. So, I mean, you, to me, I think that's kind of a, yes, it hurts their chances, but I almost think that they can overcome that like it's nothing because they were used to not having good blocking in front of Joe Burrow anyways. Yeah. Um, so I'm trying to find the numbers, uh, but in his la- as of this is as of December 11th, he was 17-3 and three against the spread. He's just a cover machine. Uh, oh, here we go. 19-3 and three against the spread in his last 22 starts. Are we talking about Joe? Seven straight covers. Joe Huh? You talking about Joe Burrow? Yeah. Um, and in fact, when it's cold, he does even better. Uh, 50 degrees, he was 9-2 and two, um, straight up and 10-1 and one against the spread. And 40 degrees, he's 5-0 and oh straight up and against the spread. That was as of December 4th. So there's a couple other games mixed in there. But all this dude does is cover. Um, so that that is also something to consider. I've tried to go against them a few times and uh when i do it typically does not go well for me so <laughs> yeah maybe, and uh... i was just gonna say on, on on the other side of the ball too like um for me i i'm looking at this game from josh allen or nothing from this offense like i really don't think cincinnati's gonna give up much on the ground so uh it, <sighs> one of the bets i'm attacking here like i i found this i think it's kind of ludicrous that they posted this number but Josh Allen's passing yards at 268 and a half. He's gone over that in all but one, two of his career playoff games with both of those coming in, one of them in 2019 and the divisional round in 2020. So for five consecutive playoff starts, Josh Allen has cleared that number easily and he's probably going to clear 300. Um, Cincinnati should be able to move the ball because the Bengal, the Bills defense, I don't think has been as good as what we saw at the beginning of the year because a lot of guys have been banged up on the backside, the DBs and stuff. So I, I like the over in this game, especially since it's going lower. I liked it when it was posted at 50. I don't care what weather we get. Both of these teams are used to that kind of stuff. So I think that both of them can move the ball regardless. 
Yeah, uh, I kind of like fading uh, Gabe Davis after last week, um, but it looks like market's also on that. So if it, under 57 and a half is minus 130 right now in DraftKings. Um, I do think James Cook has a big game here. I think, I don't know, I'm trying, there's no receiving props up for him yet, or at least that I can find, but his rushing props um, are are pretty interesting. I think, what are they? Uh, 36 and a half, 39 and a half, depending on where you look. I think he could be um, much more impactful on the ground than th I think they've been kind of building him up to this spot. And he's going to be really important to what they do. So I like James Cook um, doing stuff this week. It, the only thing, the only reason why, like, I, I love your your take on the running backs as pass catchers, just because, like, Cincinnati has been incredible against the run this year. I think they've only yeah. allowed two of their last seven opponents to eclipse 100 team total rushing yards. So I think that this is, again, Josh Allen, the ball is going to be in his hands all day. Josh Allen probably goes over 50 plus rushing yards in this game. Maybe we see him get back to, maybe we see Josh Allen turn into Daniel Jones from the, from the wild card round and he has 10 plus carries, but yeah, I, I like the ball to be in the air a lot. Yeah. And I think this could be a spot where if Hendrickson and Hubbard are coming off the edge, Allen can dump it over to cook. Um, and get or I think you see a lot more, uh, screens to Stefan Diggs because to me it was embarrassing that he had one effing target in the second half of that game against Miami I don't care what kind of coverage they were rolling his way like dude is it, unstoppable there was no reason why Buffalo should have stopped feeding him the ball um you can get Naheem Hines anytime touchdown as high as plus 950 I think that is a fun bet. I think he could be a little bit more involved in the screen. You obviously he, you see him in the return game, so if he does it return for a touchdown. Um, but DraftKings has it at eight. FanDuel has it at six fifty. I don't love that as much, but if you can get eight or better, I think that makes a lot of sense. But Naheem Hines receiving yards could be in play um, depending on what they ended up getting posted at. The fourth and final game. Your Dallas Cowboys are coming to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. Uh, opened at four, went down to as low as three. It's now sitting at three and a half pretty much everywhere. Thoughts? I don't know what to think about. The Cowboys are Jekyll and Hyde on offense, even defense. I have no idea what team is going to show up. The one thing that um, keeps sticking in the back of my mind is that if last week's pass rush shows up this week against the 49ers and their Brock Purdy is put under the kind of pressure that I don't think he's really experienced yet, it this game could get interesting. However, similar to last year, uh, everyone, oh, Cowboys, blah, blah, blah. Like both of us are on the Niners. Um, you know, it, if this number was closer, like under three, I, I think that the Niners are a smash play. Just they're at home. The defense is still the defense that we've seen all season. Yeah, they've been susceptible to passing game, but you can't really run on them. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't trust the Cowboys quite yet to be able to put together two consecutive games like we saw last week in Tampa. And even so, Tampa Bay freaking sucked this year. I don't care, Tom Brady. Yeah, like I, I, was, I fell victim to the TB12 thing, like playoffs, blah, blah, blah. But like Tampa Bay sucked. So I mean, yeah, and what I'm, did I'm, we really I, learn? A month and a, a month ago, I was like, "Oh, this is going to be great. Somebody's going to go to Tampa. Tampa's going to be the home team, and they're going to kick the crap out of." No, and I was like, "No, I'm pulling the plug on that." The Cowboys are the right side. They absolutely crushed them. Uh, but this game comes down to Dak Prescott. If Dak Prescott yeah. plays like he did last week, sp especially once they kind of got rolling, yeah, after you the can first throw on the Niners. That is the best way to attack this defense. But, but if, it's having time to throw on the Niners. But if turnover Dak shows up and he throws a couple picks and Nick Bosa's partying in the backfield and <laughs> Armstead and all these guys are just constantly putting pressure on him, the Niners are going to dump truck Dallas. You know, we talked about it a little bit with, sing with Bengals, Bills. I think this is a take the Cowboys on the money line or the Niners alt line. Because th this line being where it is, I grabbed it at four thinking it was going to go up closer to six. Um, so it going back, d d didn't love that. Um, that concerns me a little bit. But there's there's clearly like 
excitement about what this Cowboys team, and we talked about it even when we did our bracket, this feel, felt like a team that would either lose in round one yeah. or would get a ton they of could. momentum and push towards the Super Bowl. And maybe they win this game. Maybe Brock Purdy shows up as a rookie. Dak has an amazing playoff. I mean, we've seen guys who even in the season didn't do as amazing be able to put it together for four straight games. And if Dallas beats the Niners and then beats the Eagles, they're all of a sudden in the Super Bowl, and they make a hell of a lot of sense that if you like Dallas this week to look at those Super Bowl futures because you could get a decent number right now. But Well, especially, uh, again, it would be it's going to be a divisional matchup no matter what in the NFC Championship game if Dallas moves on. So, I mean, yeah. they're not going into unfamiliar territory regardless of whether or not it's Philly or the Giants. And if they're the home team for the NFC Championship, if the Giants were to upset Philadelphia, yep. like Dallas is probably a six-and-a-half-point favorite, I mean, close to what Philly is. I mean... Yeah, yeah. So uh, probably, probably closer to four-and-a-half just because if they beat the Eagles, they'll get a little more love. Yeah, but if Dallas um, but the, San Francisco Dallas in, is eight to one right now to win the Super Bowl. Um, so that that's interesting. We assume what they're probably say say Dallas and the Eagles win, they're probably a three and a half, four point underdog again next week. Yeah, it's it's probably uh, the, the generic home home field advantage. Yeah, so if you want to get cute with it, you can bet the money line this week, bet the money line next week, and then they're probably underdogs against Buffalo and Kansas City and if they play the Bengals, it's probably close to a pick Um, And then obviously Jacksonville, who knows? But um, I don't think anybody expects that at this point. No. Um, so, yeah. So, I that that's another way to play it. If you li- really like Dallas, just hammer the money line. Hammer it again and hammer it again until, until they lose. Um, so, I wanted to get your opinion on this because last year, I think we hit on like every single uh, – all across the board. We hit the against the spread – over under and the money line in this game when San Francisco went to Dallas, we we like the under blah blah blah. Uh, this game feels the number feels a little ominous to me because if we do like Dallas to compete here, I think they're going to have to put up points. Like this is not going to be a spot where they could win twenty to seventeen yeah. against the 49ers. Right. I, I think the over is probably the play. I think if Dallas wins, it's probably an over. If the Niners win, it could be a close win and it probably goes over if the Niners steamroll them it probably goes over um I was just gonna say like this feels like a spot where one of them is scoring 30 and the other one is probably getting to 17 you know 16 17 maybe maybe 20 Mm -hmm. this is more played in the high 40s low 50s I think both these defenses have a really good chance at scoring touchdowns um special teams Kevante Turpin could score one um I will say a lot of like the the this the bets are pretty split in terms of over and under um but um the actual more of the money is coming in on the under I just I I don't really yeah just kind of interesting and 46 46 and a half like What's that? If we get say twenty seven, twenty three, twenty seven, twenty, um, thirty one. That's what I mean. Like it, it. The Cowboys have been at times this year. Jacksonville put up thirty one against them when they came yeah. back. Like teams have been. Unless able to you think it's going to be like thirty one to thirteen, or twenty eight to nine, something like that. Like you think the Niners just dump truck them. Maybe, but I just if this I feel was like the Niners it, defense of the first quarter of the season, I think that would be possible. But because of the holes that we've kind of seen recently, I to think that the Cowboys aren't going to find the end zone twice in this game, especially in a spot where they're an underdog and San Francisco is probably going to score. Like, I don't think Dallas is going to be able to hold back the efficiency of what San Francisco presents, like they did against Tampa, who's pass only. Yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I mean just like the the here's the so basically since Christmas, the Niners have scored 37, 37, 38, and 41. That's their last four weeks. That's basically Brock has been amazing. They have all of their weapons, they're pushing pieces around. So I think the Niners score three 
something, 30 something. Um, and then you just need between 14 and 17 from Dallas to, to kind of get to the over. I just, I just think the over is so much more in play. What do you, uh, what do you think about interception props for this game? I mean, Dak broke his string of games with a pick. What's, what's, what's his number to throw a pick? So on DK, it's minus 150. That's not great juice, but. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think he throws one for sure. I my question is, it, I I would look at see if you can find over one and a half, because that could be a fun way to get to it. Yeah, especially because um, you're going to get plus money on that. And I do think it's interesting. Like last week, um, privately outside of the show, like I was on Dax passing yards total over, which hit easy um yeah. i think this is the spot too again he's at 250 and a half like san francisco's only allowed i think two teams to go over 100 yards over the last half of the season rushing and like y- yeah dallas still wants to run the ball but they're not going to beat the 49ers by keeping this 17 to 16 like and relying on brett mauer are you kidding me no yeah the uh, other thing i like is you could take Dak over one and a half passing touchdowns which is either plus 100 at FanDuel or you know, right, right around there. And you could parlay that with an interception. So you get two passing touchdowns, minus one pick, get a decent number out of both of them. I, I think that could be a fun way to look. Yeah. I like, I, I like that. I like that. All right, Brian, we've talked enough. We've gone through it all. I think it's time to give the people the bets and the units and we can get the hell out of here. I'll give you the T what are your three bets and uh, what are your units? All right, so I'm going to start the first game on Saturday, Chiefs versus Jaguars. I'm laying the eight and a half with Kansas City at minus 110. Uh, I mean, I've been absolutely terrible with my picks, so you're going to want to probably take Jacksonville on the money line here. But (laughs) um, I'm going to go with a three-unit play here. I I, I feel pretty confident in Andy Reid. And then my second one, Saquon Barkley receptions, over four and a half, plus 115. I think this is a big spot for him in the passing game. I think maybe it's six or seven receptions from him. So I'm going to go five units on this. I feel Woo! really good about Saquon being utilized in the passing nice game. Nice too. And then the last one, which, uh, I mean, probably I, I would do this to try to recoup some of my losses, but I would also go five units on this. But uh, just for the show purpose, it's only going to be two units. Josh Allen over 268.85 passing yards. He's gone over 300 and like, five consecutive playoff games or some something of that nature. Like I think this is Josh Allen game through the air. I think both these teams score a lot. So I also like the over in this game, but for the show, Josh Allen passing yards over 268 and a half at two units. Yeah. I, I like that. Um, I will caution people to avoid uh, money line parlays and teasers that are chiefs Eagles. Um, oh yeah. Weird things happen with one seeds. Weird things happen with divisions um, you know, you can use one or two, um, and find different ways to attack it, but, uh, be, be cautious, just loading up on that. Uh, my three bets, I am going Jarek McKinnon over 19 and a half rushing yards, a lot like, uh, with your, with your plays there, Ryan, I think he has a nice game. I think Jarek McKinnon, anytime touchdown, it's a little, it's like even money, but it's fine. Uh, Jarek McKinnon, two touchdowns could be fun. You know, I, I think McKinnon has a nice game here. Um, so I'm going to put three units on that. Um, I love Philadelphia minus seven and a half um, against the Giants. I think they cover this number pretty easily. I think the Giants have been incredibly fun. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to see what they can be, especially if they decide to keep Daniel Jones around. Uh, but I think the Eagles are a different animal. And I think they remind people how special they are. Um Starting this week, I'm going to put three units on that. And the San Francisco 49ers minus three and a half versus the Dallas Cowboys is my third and final bet. And that is getting four units. That is my favorite play of the weekend. That was the first thing on my personal betting card. The third first thing on my betting card for the show. Um, I think the Niners defense is incredibly legit. I think Dak having his INT woes. Um, and I'm also con- cu- curious on your thoughts on this as we get out of here, Brian, but we saw Tony Pow- Pollard really get the majority of the work um, against Tampa in key spots. 
Is that something you think we expect to see going forward? Or do you think if this game gets a little shysty, maybe a little gross, um, when it's when it really matters, it's it's Zeke out there getting the ball. I mean, it's friggin' far too late for fantasy football people, like for the Cowboys to finally realize that Tony Pollard is better than Zeke Elliott at this stage yeah. of their careers. However, in this game, I think we see Zeke more than Pollard just because of the type of defense that San Francisco presents. Like when Dallas runs, I think you see more of Zeke. And then they use Pollard finally again. They get him more involved in the passing game. Like I really don't think the Cowboys are going to be able to just bust it in there and three yards of to a cloud of dust against yeah. this 49ers team and hope to be successful. So Zeke's rushing yards is like 35, 35 and a half. You can get a Zeke anytime touchdown at plus 170. What are his what what's his attempts? His rush attempts. That that would be a number that I would I would look at. Because last week what I can find. He was super limited. Uh, I don't see it in there. Let me go back to DraftKings and see if they have a number for us. Uh, uh, yeah, they don't even have it on I'm checking at prize picks too to see if they have a number posted, but they don't yet. Uh, yeah, no rushing attempts, but yeah, that could be an interesting way to look at it too. Yeah, because I do think that Zeke will get the majority of if they have like second and second and five or something, he's gonna yep. get those carries. Or you can also look at going against Tony Pollard too and just taking the under on his attempts and his yards and stuff. So yeah. um those are our bets. Those are our units. Once again, I'm on McKinnon over 19 and a half rushing yards, the Eagles minus seven and a half, and the Niners minus three and a half. Brian is on the Chiefs, minus 8.5. Saquon Barkley, over 4.5 receptions. And Josh Allen, over 268.5 passing yards. Enjoy the games. Win some money. We will be back next week. We also have NASCAR content coming your way. So if you like NASCAR, if you want to bet NASCAR, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the thumbs up if you're enjoying what we're doing. And we'll four weeks. Next time.